everyone, I hope you're super well. In this video, I thought I'd talk about how to conquer any fears or concerns you may have about posting your art on social media. Also, at the end of this video, there will be a speed paint of my bunny eating berries. I do hope you enjoy it. It's actually drying at the moment. The reason I thought I'd talk about this topic is because way back when social media was kind of getting off the ground, it was a little bit less intimidating to post your art on social media platforms. For example, on DeviantArt, especially when it was starting out, I wouldn't say there was like, a t like every single piece of work that was on the main homepage was actually a masterpiece or anything like that. Even with Instagram or with YouTube, many of the videos that were popular on YouTube, for example, some of them were quite basic in fact and not particularly uh, you know, difficult to follow along with, especially if you were a beginner artist. Now of course there are still those tutorials, but now there's a ton of you know, YouTube videos where the art is absolutely incredible. Just like how on Instagram, when you log in, you see your homepage or perhaps a art hashtag that's really popular you go and click on there and it's full of incredible art. Of course, it's great if the art is really good on these platforms because you know that the standard is high. However, if you're starting out on social media, it can be pretty scary at the beginning or a little bit intimidating because you see all these amazing artists and you think, well, what's the point of me posting my work? It's just going to get lost in this sea of your incredible art and talent and perhaps people will disregard my artwork. When I started on social media, I made the mistake of watching all these videos on YouTube that talked about how to go really, really fast on social media. And they all seemed to say, just post every single day, constantly, whenever you can. And so I, when I started out, particularly on YouTube, I followed this strategy of, okay, I'm gonna have to post all the time. It doesn't matter what it is. I just post like me drawing a doodle or, or drawing like a really simple object or painting something really, really simple. And whilst that might suit some people's particular style, it certainly didn't equal consistency in my case because I just lost motivation so quickly. I mean, who after all uh, enjoys posting things on such a regular basis that have very little effort put into them. The only effort that you put in is just to force yourself to get it up every single day. So whilst your, the algorithm may favour you for a little while because you're constantly posting, if you're not actually happy with what you're posting, then you will actually lose motivation very quickly. Therefore, my suggestion for every single art platform is to post your best work at the time. So when you're starting, if you've got, say, six drawings that you've just completed over the past few weeks or months, I would choose the best one out of that. Take it in really good lighting, or at least lighting where the image is clear. So it doesn't have to be like you have to buy a ton of lights, but just make sure that if you can't find anywhere where you've got some really good, strong lighting indoors, you can actually take your picture or whatever outside and just take it outside because natural daylight is also great for paintings and artwork. And then crop it and don't put a ton of filters on it. That's one thing that I have to say is, I personally believe it's a bit of a mistake. I don't often see tons of filters on artwork because I think quite often when we're thinking about ideas of the colour scheme, how to draw, how to paint, you put your own filter on your art if you like. You're creating your own perfect canvas and then if you add filters it kind of defeats the purpose of painting it in a particular colour or a particular style in the first place. So I don't recommend filters, but you know, perhaps uh, add a little bit of contrast if you want, or make sure that the image is clear, so the sharpness, and to get the, make sure that it's bright enough so people can see. This may sound like a minor thing, but I do feel it is important for people who draw. And that is, if you're going to post your work, for example, on Instagram, make sure that you get a decent pencil because the amount of times I've seen some incredibly talented young artists post their work on Instagram and it's with like an H pencil or a pencil from, I don't know, you get free from a notebook or something and you can't even, you can barely see the lead. Those types of really, really cheap, like basic pencils, the lead just doesn't show up and they don't really have much shading ability. 
So when you take a picture of it, and if the lighting is bad, you actually can hardly see. And I sometimes have to you know, like press my face to the screen to even see what it is. So you can be the most talented artist, but if people can't see your work properly, then you're already on to like a bit of a fail, if you like. So I would suggest to get a decent pencil. I, I, I also hear a lot that artists say, you know, I'm too poor to buy um, expensive art supplies, which I totally relate, I'm the same. But I feel like with a pencil, uh, you can just not buy that Starbucks latte or whatever for the week, or whatever you might, you know, your favorite thing for that week. Maybe don't buy it and just buy the pencil instead because a, a decent pencil doesn't cost very much. You're looking at, you know, one or two pounds maybe, but it will be a step up from by using a really, really uh, rubbishy pencil where you can't even see the lines. Another piece of advice that I think is really important, but I don't feel like I ever hear it on any kind of advice, YouTube advice video about social media, is to start actually trusting your own instinct when it comes to posting. I think a lot of the time there's an encouragement to, oh, go on out and ask you know, all your friends which of their, your photos they like and then get them to pick one. But quite often, if you're posting regularly, you're not going to have time to always ask a bunch of people which photograph you should post on your show, social media or which video you should post on your social media. So I really highly recommend starting to get to trust your inner voice and your inner personal insight. Because after all, your social media is yours. It isn't anyone else's for them to cultivate for you. The only way that you'll enjoy posting is if your social media actually represents yourself, if it represents your style and it represents the type of art that you like. So the more you post things that you like and that you enjoy and that you think look good, the more likely you are to post regularly. I think sometimes asking a lot of people is great, but there's not always going to be that opportunity. And also sometimes people may say that they like something, but they may themselves not necessarily be artists. And so you're the artist, so you know what looks good. I think that artistic people have a great eye and a great way of seeing things. And so if you can just trust yourself, then your social media won't be as stressful and it won't be as difficult. My last piece of advice would be not to let your social media accounts die out. Art accounts across the board, I think, have a struggle. We are not the most popular out of anywhere. Um, most of the time, for example, on YouTube, it would be gamers, it would be perhaps makeup, it would be all different types of fashion. And so art sometimes takes, you know, comes below those topics. Much like on Instagram, there are other things, perhaps cats, for example, animals, things like that, cute animals, um, you know, all different types of celebrity accounts, things like that, they come way ahead of us. But I think that over time, if you just keep working, your account will start to grow steadily if you keep up the consistent good work that you're showing on your account. And also, there are some accounts that have different uses. For example, for a while I was on DeviantArt, and of course that is much more digital art based. And yes, that is all for artists, but actually my art is traditional oil painting. So uh, in actual fact, I was kind of lost in that world because most people on there are digital artists. So I felt like, well, what's the point of me posting here? However, D uh, DeviantArt and Pinterest and places like that actually show up in Google, for example, if someone was to Google me and my artwork if it's on deviant art does sometimes show up so that can be a useful place to showcase things so I may not get you know a ton of um, likes on there and not a ton of traffic at all but they, it does have that slight advantage for that type of thing. Also if you tell people you're an artist probably one of the first things that they will do is google you and google your art and of course if this is somebody who is interested in getting a commission from you or want to display your work it's very important to at least have some kind of presence on social media so that they can actually see who you are and what you do. I do hope this was helpful. Please let me know your experiences and all the different social media and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and now we will go to the speed paint. I started this oil painting on a canvas panel using Gamblin oil colours and Gamblin medium 
And I really wanted to create the atmosphere, particularly in the background of this painting, of a forest clearing. So when you go through a forest, quite often a dense forest, you'll walk through a lot of trees and there'll be loads of plants and uh, twigs and mud. And then you very often, after a while, come through to a clearing. And so I wanted this to be a forest clearing where sometimes there's a shaft of light shining down upon the moss on the ground. And very often you see little animals there and then they, as soon as you appear, they sort of run away. <laughs> and I wanted to create this world where there are little animals living. And this rabbit really represented the concept of time because I wanted this rabbit to be the time the timeliest rabbit, if you like. It's always on time and therefore it gets the best of the best. It gets the best fruit, it gets the best treats, it gets the best clothes. <laughs> and however, its friends are the latecomers and that's they sort of represent lateness. So its friends come along after the rabbit has got there and has you know, eaten all the cakes and all the rich fruit that's in the forest and the lovely blackberries, the juicy blackberries and juicy raspberries, the wild strawberries. And then these little friends of the rabbit come along and they're like, what's happened? What's going on? And like most glade covers, uh, they miss out on things. Now, this isn't obviously true in real life. Sometimes people who come late don't miss out on anything. <laughs> and I have gone through various stages in my life. When I was uh, very young, I used to be late very often and I would always feel terrible and I was just terrible with timekeeping, basically. And I do think that in life, I missed out on quite a few opportunities because I would just couldn't get myself sorted out. I was so disorganized. And nowadays I am very strict about timekeeping. And at the same time, I find that if getting somewhere late actually causes me incredible worry and stress and I do think though that there is an advantage to getting to places on time obviously but at the same time it's an interesting concept this idea of having all when you get there early and having nothing when you get there late when in actual fact it's never as clear cut as that but I just wanted to explore that theme and I really had some great fun painting these blackberries and really working up the purple colour in this. I really liked the way the purple came out. I didn't actually use purple straight from the paint tube. I mixed it myself because I feel like it tends to get a much richer purple. The red that I use um, on a regular basis is very, very intense. So it kind of creates this beautiful, rich, uh, purplish tone when I mix it with blue. And so here we go, here's the finished painting. I do hope you like it, this dapper Mr. Rabbit getting everywhere on time. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon. Take care guys.